Well, first of all, um, a lot of thank yous um, should be said to all the time and effort and hard work that went to getting ready for that opener. Certainly only guaranteed 12 games a year, and I think our players have had a great eight or nine months here working at it. Um, appreciate the staff's effort um, and certainly a lot of support staff and people at the university have helped as well. So we appreciate that, kind of getting off to a, a good start here. I do think that the big message for our team is that the margin of error out there Saturday was really big. Uh, that's not negative toward grandma, and I just think it's important that we realize that we have some discipline relative issues. We have some details that we need to get fixed, and we need to start realizing the consequences of maybe not being fundamentally sound. Maybe we played with poor eye discipline, mental errors, loafs, poor communication, whatever the case may be. These things are going to have consequences, and certainly the margin of error is going to get smaller as we go forward. Um, I do think the best teams in football, get they make tremendous improvement from week one to week two. Uh, I think we'll have a little bit of a compound effect because 40% of our roster is new. Um, and I think that it's important for our team to understand that good teams really don't give you anything. You know, they make the other team earn it. And certainly we gave away a few things on Saturday that we can fix. One of the things I think is important for our staff is to really look at the game with some integrity and evaluate what's the design of the play, um, what was the execution of the play, what were the fundamentals and techniques within the play, and not just evaluate the result. You know, I think it's critical that we uh, take a good look at the mirror here and try to everybody in the organization really work to make improvement. But happy for the players uh, to see that they're Hard work pays off, and I think there was a lot of significant positives but, and also a lot of significant things that we need to clean up. I'm sure you guys will ask about that. So with that, we'll take some questions. We, we didn't talk about the defense a lot at all the other night. Right. What was your assessment of that after getting a good look at the phone? Well, the good thing on defense is I think we kind of answered the bell. We, we gave up an explosive play on the opening play of the game, and then we kind of anchored down there and got a stop and made them kick a field goal in the red zone, which was good. And then we had a couple three and outs in a row. So uh, gave up close to 300 yards and probably gave them, you know, 150 of those. So, um, you know, the big message there is that, like most days, uh, poor eye discipline, a, a mental error, a couple of lows. Uh, can turn into a couple of big plays. But overall, uh, much improved. Uh, but in general, I think the margin of error was pretty big out there Saturday. So we, we need to really go back and look at those things we talked about before, the design, the execution, the fundamentals and techniques within each play, uh, and where we can make improvement. But uh, we, we've we added quite a bit of personnel over there, lots of new names. Um, I do think the returning players that were experienced uh, showed up and competed, and some guys, um, you know, that we recognize as players of the week. So lots of positives, and uh, I think that those guys only get better as they gain more experience. I'm sure having the bye week in week two is not something that is favorable, but being a new staff and having all of the new players that you have, can it be somewhat of an advantage to – maybe correct some things early and really get some evaluation in early before you get Right. Well, no matter, you know, when the bye week is, 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 you know, really not under our control, you know, we're going to try to make the most of our time and execute the same plan we would um, even if we played our bye week was week 10. You know, we're going to work on a couple future opponents on Tuesday and Wednesday. We did not practice on Sunday. We lifted and ran them pretty good. We evaluated the film. Uh, they are they're off today. You know, we'll come back and work on two future opponents in kind of a training camp formatted practice the next two days, and we'll turn the page to Mississippi State on Thursday. So um, we've got a good plan, and um, you know, I'm excited about you know the work that we can do to improve, and not only fundamentally with our football team, but I think just logistically with our staff as well. Coach, you talk, you're you're tempo seemed to be a lot faster than I, I guess I remember in the past. Can you talk about just getting to the ball, making how many plays do you do you like to run in a game, things like that? It seemed like right. it was a little faster. Uh, 
Well, yeah, I mean, that's the objective. You know, we want to try to use it to our advantage, and certainly it can change within the game based off how the defense is playing. But, um, you know, we like to create a fifth quarter. We like to get in that 85 play count. I worked for a guy named Todd Graham last year who uh, really, even though he's a defensive guy, he's had several signature offensive teams throughout his career. And he, uh, some of the things that we've done to speed up our operation, I think, uh, has helped us. And, you know, that's the objective. Our defense was getting three and outs. Uh, we could see the fatigue factor on Grandma's defense, and I think it proved to be effective in the game. So uh, we want our base operation to be really fast, and then when we go as fast as we can, um, you know, it, it keeps the def defenders off guard and also keeps the signal caller on defense kind of out of balance as well. Again, after looking at the film, Mm -hmm. Nunez, what'd you like, and, and what do you need to work on in the next two weeks, week and a half? Right. Well, we kind of view our quarterback as the point guard of the basketball team. You know, it's his job to push the ball up the court, distribute the ball, uh, take what the defense has given him. Uh, and certainly, I thought Andre, I thought he did a good job of that for the most part. You know, there's probably six or eight plays in the game where he'd like to have them back. Uh, but, you know, there's not many plays out there where three or four things can't happen and he gets to push the buttons, you know. So he's got the remote control in his hand and he gets to uh, distribute the ball. So it's all about decision making and then certainly when he does throw it, we want him to be very accurate and I think for the most part he was. But he also benefited from some exceptional plays by some of our skill players as well. Um, it all starts with rushing the ball, you know, and if you're – uh, bloody in their nose, you know, the coordinator on the other side, He's that's his main concern is stopping the run, and that makes the throw game really simple for you. So uh, we did that, and uh, we all worked well together on offense. And uh, overall, outside of the turnover, we met every goal we have. Ross was talking about how he just like he got beat up front. Did you feel the same in terms of your, your line work? Uh, yeah, for the most part. You know, they're, they're very aggressive. Um, and unique in their front seven. They present lots of different variables. Um, I thought it was critical going into the game that we neutralized that. Um, I thought our guys did a good job playing with balance, really covered up the first level of the defense. I thought the backs did a good job for the most part. There were a few, um, you know, precision issues that we need to work out, but for the most part, they did a really good job. So. We kept the concept simple because of the variables on the other side, uh, and I think that allowed us to be effective. So we've got some – we're, we're going to be, uh, I think, a good rushing football team. I think we have a chance to be really good at that. You mentioned some of the mistakes that you made. Uh, can you give some specifics or some generalities? Well, I mean, I think just in general, the, the variables for me were different because, you know, you got defense, uh, you've got – uh, your routine was different, you know, first time routine, even though you kind of have a little plan in your head, you, you, you know, get to looking at the wrong things and trip up here or there. But I think just all logistical issues, um, the things that we did really, really well that I feel like I did really well are the things I've been doing for a long time, you know. So just like any of us, you know, with time, and the key is to really evaluate those things and have the courage to say, hey, man, I really screwed this up and I need to work at it and, and do a better job next time. So, and that goes for everybody, myself included. What, uh, what injuries did you come out with? And then also, did you figure out how many actual true freshmen you ended yeah. up playing? And, and with, with that, with the true, we're, I was talking about this earlier, it seems like everybody has a different strategy for how they right. use the four. Is your thoughts front loading it, spreading it out, or if you maybe you know, see mm -hmm. one or two, and then you save a couple for the end of the right. season? Well, we – first of all, the injury update would be Alex Allen is the only significant injury that we had. He did tear his ACL and has a slight meniscus. Uh, so he'll be getting fixed sooner rather than later. Um, certainly we're all disappointed for Alex. Um, and, you know, we'll be there for him and support him as he goes through this process and rehab. Um, Outside of that, we're a relatively healthy team in general. Outside, you know, Sammy Ochoa is still dealing with the same issues. Uh, we're still trying to resolve those. 
we did have 17 total newcomers play in the game, um, which I think is a pretty large number for an opener, you know. So, but in general, our philosophy is going to be if they can impact the game, we're playing them. You know, I think we're too. I mean, we're we're significantly under 85. You know. Um, so we're a borderline FCS team at this point. You know, we've had to, we're fortunate that we had a pretty good core group of walk-ons here that have been able to buffer that. And I think our personnel department did a really good job. Josh Thompson did a great job with our preferred walk-on program. We added several new young men to the program. It's allowed us to practice better. Um, and certainly, I think in the future, we want to feature that program. So. In general, we're going to play anybody that can impact the game every week, and it's just one week at a time. Uh, what do we need to do to win this week? And certainly as we get down to the end, we'll make some calculated decisions relative to where we're at down the stretch. But right now, we're just in find a way to get it done mode. Do you know how many of the 17 were true freshmen? As opposed to I think there was eight true freshmen and nine newcomers. You know, so... Um, Couple grad transfers, obviously three of those, I think, and then uh, you know some three for three junior college players. Uh, but you know all 40% of the roster's new, and 17 brand new players played. So I think only two newcomers started the game, which is um, unique. Manak and Kendall Johnson being those two guys, but certainly. You look at the play count, the participation chart, a lot of those guys were in the double digits, which is good for us in the long term. We'll, we'll continue to get better. Coach, what determines the, your running back uh, cycling them through? How, how do you do that? Is it like the quarterback you have it set? Or? Yeah, we do. We have a specific kind of process that we use to uh, do that. It's, it's really about carries, you know. Um, and, and making sure that they've got an opportunity to impact the game. And certainly that changes relative to the play count. It's not necessarily series as much as touches, uh, but we want to spread those out there, you know, given the nature of that position and keeping those guys fresh. People don't realize that how taxing it is to be a running back. You know, that requires – it's everything you got each time, you know, and I think that it's, it's – uh, it's a challenge. So keeping those guys in the game for a long time uh, is not our approach. We want to try to, after a certain amount of carries and touches, we're going to try to put the next guy in. And certainly, you can tell we've got plenty of runners. Anything else for Coach, please? Do you know you're one of three coaches in the country that had never lost a game right now? Oh, yeah. How about that? <laughs> well, let me just say this. We've got uh, lots of work to do, that's what I would tell you. But, um, you know, nothing like being undefeated, right? You find it interesting that the coaches who won say they have work to do and the coaches who lost are telling us how well their team improved? Uh, you know, it is what it is, man, you know. I think that uh, we got work to do. But I do think that uh, – you know, I think the key thing for our players, and we tried to kind of convey this to them yesterday, is that, you know, human nature is to want to ignore the illegal shift that got a touchdown called back, you know. And we can't just go sweep that under the rug and act like it didn't happen. You know, we got to realize that there's going to be games that we play where that one play could be the difference in the team winning or losing. Uh, and that has nothing to do with the opponent. You know, we got to control those type of things, uh, make the other team earn it. And um, we overall, even though everybody's patting us on the back, we can execute at a lot higher level, you know. So uh, we got work to do, and certainly the challenges are, you know, looking us right in the eyes. Can you just speak real quick to the difficulty that it might be to, to make sure that the players stay focused on that? Because, you know, like you said, you're gonna, they're going to go to class. Oh, man, y'all killed him, whatever. People that don't realize that you did what you wanted to do, what you were supposed to do. Keep it in place. Right. Well, I think we don't have that problem right now. I mean, we. it's, it's kind of like uh, 
I don't know how to say this, but you know they got a little taste of it. You know if that makes sense. So they're anxious to go back for more. Um, you know every team's got its problems, right? If you're number one AP poll, coaches poll, you know, and hey, we've been on the other end of that spectrum too. You're trying to push every boat button you can to motivate them. So wherever you're at, whatever dynamic it is, you got problems that you're managing, whether that's entitlement. Uh, or that's, um, you know, confidence, which is really kind of where we're at, is a self-belief that, hey, you are, we are capable, uh, and we should be thinking about and expecting to play to a certain standard. Um, and that's where we're at as a program. I mean, we got to get a certain level of confidence and belief, and I think we're realizing that, you know, how you prepare, um, is going to really impact how you play and that within a game there's always going to be adversity it's the nature of the game so we we just got to grow up you know we got to learn how to win learn how to handle some success and but certainly i don't really think we have that problem right now you know we we got keep that chip on our shoulder and keep working here